Grandstand Betters here with our three top bets in the soccer world this weekend. And we have special guests Ian and Thomas from Very Biased Opinions. They're here to give you all their analysis and much, much more. And make sure you stay to the end of the video where we give you the Grandstand Betters over of the week. And it all starts right now. Thanks for joining us again here at Grandstand Betters. I'm Matt, as always. And this weekend, we start our soccer bets in the soccer world. But I'm very privileged to have two gentlemen from the English soccer world joining us today. Mr. Ian and Mr. Thomas, they come from very biased opinions. Make sure you not only hit our subscribe button, but go over to very biased opinions, hit their subscribe button, get the notifications. They go over all different kinds of soccer predictions, including their main Premier League predictions. Now, these guys are going to give us three of their bets for the weekend. We trust them. We back them. And we can't wait to hear what they have to say. We're going to go to Ian from Very Biased Opinions, and he's going to give us a La Liga prediction. Ian, what do you have for us? Hey, Matt. Thanks very much. Great to be here. Uh, the first game I'm looking at today, as you said, is in La Liga. It is Sevilla versus Barcelona. And what we're looking at in this one is Sevilla on the handicap line. It's currently coming in at 0.5. So if it's a draw, which is what I'm expecting this game to be, which is what most people are expecting this game to be, you are going to be quids in in this one. That's, that's an English little term to you there, quids in. Um, but why we are looking at Sevilla in this one is just because they're so darn hard to beat they're in fantastic form in La Liga currently Barcelona are ahead of them in third place Sevilla in fourth but it's basically neck and neck between the two of them uh, and the main thing about Sevilla is they just don't concede goals they've only conceded 16 goals in the whole season they like to really slow games down and play at a snail's pace as to Barcelona I must say so don't expect this game to be um, any to play to anything more than a crawl, like a walking football game. But Sevilla are very good at finding a way and finding a way to get draws and get wins. And especially they've got great players in, great offensive players in the side, like Ocampos, like Suso, and like um, and Nesri. They can definitely hurt this Barcelona side. And I think the smart money is on them, especially on this handicap. If you're feeling brave, you could even back them outright. But definitely, I would recommend the handicap line. So the handicap line, uh, plus five for the Americans out there, that is the spread. Um, you're taking them at a draw. That's a winner with the .5 on the goal line there. Um, you know, it's interesting to me, Ian. Uh, I know that Barcelona has Messi, and, you know, as an American, all the time Barcelona's winning. We expect them to do well. They have great players on their team. Um, I'm a little interested. Why why aren't you backing the better team with the better player? Yeah, it's a really good point. And obviously Messi is a wonderful player and has been phenomenal. One of the best players to ever play the game. But he is coming to the twilight years of his career. And he isn't quite as able to sort of carry this Barcelona side like he was in the past. And certainly when they do come up against the, the better clubs, they do struggle. Like, for example, against Paris Saint-Germain in the in the Champions League, they got absolutely smashed. And I know Sevilla lost to Dortmund, but Barcelona ain't gonna, aren't going to play like Borussia Dortmund. They're going to play in a much slower style. It's going to be very easy for Sevilla to just crowd Messi out, not give him any supply, and then just like, and then the rest of the team is a little bit lost. Okay, yeah, no, that's that's great analysis. Thank you for that. So Ian's going with uh, Sevilla. On the goal line, handicap, spread, however you want to say it, plus 0.5. Thank you, Ian. We'll get back with you in just a moment for another pick. But let's go to your better half, um, or as, you know, you might say. Work but... wife. <laughs> but we have Thomas also from Very Biased Opinions. Even though he wears a Boston Red Sox hat, we will still oh. allow him on this show. And uh, Thomas, if I'm not mistaken, you have a great uh, bet for us in the Bundesliga. I do. So we are going for over three and a half goals in the Dortmund versus Armenia Bielefeld game. Strap yourselves in, people. Balsby Baron Borussia 09 EB Dortmund, currently known as Borussia Dortmund BVB, or my favorite name. D 
Die Schwarzgelben are one of the best teams in the Bundesliga. They sacked their 1,005-year-old manager recently, replaced him with Edin Terzic, and goals are flying in. They can't defend. They can attack. This team is absolutely nuts going forward. They are dripping in European royalty and talent. They've got Claudio Reyna, who's an American. They've got Eric Holland up front. They've got Jaden Sancho, the great hope of English football. They've got everybody. Everybody who doesn't play for Bayern Munich in Germany plays for this Borussia side, and they are money right now. In their last 10 games, they've had over four, four or more goals seven times. You need to back them for over three and a half. This team is goals. That's great. Uh, I only understood four words uh, of what you just said, but I got to be honest, uh, I'm going to back you because you know what you're ta talking about. The one thing that I knew, do know about Dortmund, though, is they have this guy, Holland, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, yep. And I know, like, is he the real deal? This guy, I think, has 17 goals. The next guy on the team only has five. Uh, is he is he going to be a real deal? What What's his deal? Erling Holland is one of the best young players in the world right now. He's got 17 goals in 17 games in the Bundesliga. He scored eight times in the Champions League, which is easily the hardest tournament to play in in the world. He's got a, a goal in the DFB Pokal, a goal in the DFB, DFL Super Cup. Last year, he had more goals in the Champions League than games. He is absolute money. He's the second coming of Lewandowski. And Lewandowski hasn't even left yet. This guy is money back him to score all right so speaking of scoring uh i just wanted to add one thing i love watching bundesliga soccer um uh, probably a little more you're gonna hate me than the premier league uh and it's because and i'm sure a lot of americans do enjoy bundesliga maybe syria uh, um definitely not la liga because there's not many goals in that league but with bundesliga why can you touch on like why there's so many goals compared to like the Premiership or La Liga, like what's what's the deal with that? Well, I think the main thing there is there's it's a lot of top heavy talent and a lot of young talent as well as some of the best managers in the world cutting their teeth at Leverkusen. They're bringing through lots of young, really talented players. The same at Wolfsburg. Leipzig have Julian Nagelsmann, possibly the best young manager in the world. He plays like a Christmas tree formation that changes nine different times in a match. It's impossible to mark them out. Bayern are the best team in the world. They look generational at this point obviously i've talked to death about dortmund and then they've got other sides like eintracht frankfurt uh Werder bremen have history hertha berlin last year had one of the best young teams in the country but they mix that in healthily with a bunch of garbage and they flow that garbage in and let the big boys just pick them off for goals but these garbage teams are a bit like premier league teams where there is attacking talent in them and every now and then they just spring these nuts surprises and they you know hoffenheim got a two-all draw with dortmund earlier and hoffenheim in the bottom half of the table so it's a great league uh but maybe they should import some more defenders awesome yeah thanks for shining light on that i love bundesliga um, and hey, if you guys are watching and want some good Champions League analysis, make sure you head over to Very Bias Opinions, watch Ian and Thomas. Um, Bayern Munich, as you as you touched on, is the favorite. I looked at the lines. Uh, they were like minus 170 over here in the States. Um, so that is the team to beat. So um, good analysis. So they're going with Dortmund over three and a half. That's uh, Thomas's pick. Uh, this week, and I know you guys have collaborated on a great pick. Um, we're going to hear from Bull, but Thomas, let's start uh, from you. Anyone who's ever watched our channel knows that I love Leeds United. They're one of the most attacking, exciting sides in the league, led by Argentine manager Marcelo Bielsa. The man is a tinkerer. He changes the team constantly. They flow forward. They don't defend half the time, but the way they attack, they can be 3-0 down, and you still back them to win 4-3. This is an awesome team. They have the uh, they have Patrick Bamford, who's the third highest scorer, I think, in the league right now. He's up there. He's English, 13 or 14 goals. Uh, Rafinha and Rodrigo driving forwards. They have a really good upcoming midfielder called Calvin Phillips, who holds the line. Jack Harrison driving up the wing. They've got good uh, talent that's come over from the Bundesliga and Robin Koch. Stuart Dallas provides this really great outlet. I think he's down the left wing. Or no, maybe it's down the right. I can't remember. But he's a, he's a winger, right? Uh and they are just absolutely fantastic. And Luke Ayling does the same thing that Stuart Dallas does. Everybody, though, in this team attacks. They flow forward. Every time they attack, you see four or five players in the box. That generally means they're going to get a shot off, and eventually they're going to score a goal. Great analysis on that, uh, Thomas. Ian, uh, I would love to talk about Villa for a moment. They have two games in hand. 
The next three after this game, they play uh, the bottom tier of the premiership. Seven of their last, I think, 14 games, 50% of their games are against the bottom half of the table. Are they going to try to make a run at the top five here? Uh, is that even possible? Does any of that rely on injuries? Uh, what's going on with them? Well, first and foremost, Matt, Villa have had an, a great season compared to where they were last season. They're probably the most improved side in the Premier League, I would say. And Dean Smith's done a wonderful job as their coach this year. Um I just question whether they are good enough to get into those top four positions to get Champions League. They might be able to scrape a Europa League spot, finishing uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, depending on how deep that goes this year. Um, and the main thing is just the depth in their squad. Um, you touched on it with injuries, and we'll get to that in a second. And the, But I don't think the games in hand necessarily help them either. You see teams, when teams do like fall behind and they have to play two games a week, it's not always helpful in the Premier League because of the intensity of the league. So if they had a week-to-week -week schedule, that might actually benefit them better. But the biggest news coming out of Villa is they're missing their, their talisman, their main man, the guy who's everything to their squad, and that is Jack Grealish. I mean, he is... Um, just everything to Aston Villa, as I just said. Like he, he's the one guy who everybody in that team looks to to kind of drag them out of a hole, to be the match winner, to be the star. And it's not that the other players aren't great as well. He's just the you really notice it when he's not there. And I think the rest of the side do as well. And against a side like Leeds, who are just going to attack, attack, attack on this. Leeds United pitch, which is like a, a freaking skating rink. Um, it just helps them <laughs> flow forward with pace. I think they're going to be a bit spellbound. And I know there's talk that Grealish might be back um, for this game, but I don't know if he's going to be fit enough to actually start it. He might impact from it from the bench. And that's why I also think that will help, you know, play into Leeds' his hands a bit more in this one as well. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, and what I know about him, he he's their sole penalty uh, taker. Is that correct? It's just he, a, he, he's a, as I say, as I, he's absolutely just everything. He, he does a lot. He takes the penalties, takes the free kicks, drives the bus, serves the halftime oranges. He's like the the main. Watches the kit. They're lost. They're lost without Jack Grealish, Matt. Hey, and uh, you know, for those NHL fans out there, you heard it heard it here first. Uh, if you like hockey, this is going to be like an ice rink on Saturday. Um, so, who are you guys back in? You're going to back Leeds here. Uh, straight on the money line, I believe, yeah. which was coming in actually at plus money. So some good value on this line. Um, that game is uh, the latest of our three. It's at 1230 p.m. Eastern uh, here in America. That is some weird green witch time uh, in Europe. <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for all your plays. Just a quick recap for our betters out there. Uh, Ian is going with Sevilla, plus five on the goal line. Thomas is going with Dortmund, over three and a half in the Bundesliga match. And as a combined effort, you guys went with Leeds on the money line. Great value there. Uh, make sure you get that at a good price. It's plus money right now could trend uh the opposite direction if uh jack relish is injured for the full game if he decides to sit and that comes out but i would jump on that as soon as possible to get the best value before we get to our three unit play of the week from grandstand betters um guys could you just touch on what you're offering now on your um, YouTube channel. I think it's something great. It's something a lot of people should go and join. And I know it's brand new. So what do you guys have now on your YouTube channel? I'm really happy to announce that we finally got onto Patreon. Uh, so we started a Patreon account. We offer a lot of stuff. We've got three different tiers of membership. The first one is just like a general support one for our channel. But the next two offer some really good goodies, including um, ad-free videos. If you go into the top tier, known as the Champions League tier. Uh, and we're really excited for that, and we're really excited to like interact with fans and people watching the channel on there because it gives us a much more personal experience with them and the ability to interact with them and you know have a real relationship. Thank you guys so much uh, for letting everyone know about your Patreon. You guys should all go to their YouTube channel. We've put their link in the description below. Uh, you know what though? They're huge fans of uh, interacting with their subscribers. So not only on their channel, but in our channel, make sure you comment below. Give them your best soccer bets of the weekend. They would love to know what you think is a lock 
uh, in the soccer world this weekend. Um, and you know what? That leads us into a three-unit, not a lock, a three-unit bet of the week. Grandstand betters over soccer bet of the week. We're looking to La Liga, which I choking already told you doesn't score goals so it's a bit ironic we're going to La Liga so we're going with Athletic Madrid and Villarreal over two goals in the La Liga a lot of goals don't happen but Atletico Madrid has been scoring in the first half quite often I look for one to score in the first half in this game and Villarreal being at home does tend to put one or two in the net I actually see a 2-2 uh, score line here so it's at Two goals, there's a little juice. It's at minus 125. I'm going to take that juice. You got the opportunity to get uh, a push there, but I like the over two. So that's our three unit bet of the week from Grandstand Betters. And uh, hey, that does it for us here at Grandstand Betters with our great friends over at Very Biased Opinions. I just want to take a mo moment and thank Ian. Thank you, Thomas, for coming on. We're going to make this a weekly thing for the rest of the soccer season. Uh, or football season, we might, or we might cancel right away. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but these guys are great. Again, go down in the description below. Put your best bets in the comments. Find their link. Go subscribe uh, and join in on Very Biased Opinions and Grandstand Betters and get all your betting needs. Uh, so sit back this weekend, relax, enjoy some football, and let us do the work while you do the winning. <laughs>